the national makeup of the NHL has been drastically changing. You know what I mean? The evidence is right in front of us. During the 1980s, a whopping 75 to 80% of the players in every draft were maple syrup licking Canadians. In the 90s, that number drastically dropped to about 50%. The 2010s, about 40%. And in 2020, only about 30% of drafted players were Canadian. And it makes sense. As the game of hockey progresses and grows, so do training programs around the world. And well, there's still something I didn't mention. Even though Canada has seen dramatic decreases within their share of drafts, they have produced the most unbelievable child prodigies the world has ever seen. And as a result, there is many fascinating stories of complete and utter domination. There have been six hockey players who have received the exceptional status to be drafted into a Canadian hockey league at the age of 15. Connor McDavid and John Tavares got it. Red Wings first round pick Joe Valeno did too. Shane Wright is the latest team phenom. The minimum age of an OHL player is 16. But there is a caveat. If you are considered gifted, aka you are miles above the competition, you may just qualify for exceptional status. Which grants you the ability to join and play in the CHL a full year ahead of the competition. And one year may not sound like a lot, but around this time is where prospects see monumental development. I mean, one year is the difference between a kid and an actual NHL player. In 2012, that player was Connor McDavid. A player so dominant and gifted in his skating abilities, it was a no-brainer. And McDavid would walk in as a 15-year-old and humiliate 21-year-olds, as he would end up with a very impressive 66 points in 63 games. One of the most dominant performances by a 15-year-old in Canadian history. A feat that nobody ever thought could be touched. That is until when your six-year-old son would rather burn down the building than lose. And that is what made Shane so special. He has one of the highest compete levels we have ever seen. On the Don Mills Flyers as an underager, Shane Wright would nearly match McDavid's unbelievable point total with 72 points in 33 games and 150 points in 72 games. After being granted exceptional status, Shane Wright would come in and prove that he is in fact legit, as he would shatter McDavid's record with 39 goals and 66 points in 58 games, as a triple underager on a terrible Kingston team. And that's not all. Shane at the age of 15 would become the youngest player named a captain in OHL history. So he's unbelievably gifted, has a great shot, and is a great leader. And being that he's not even draft eligible until 2022, the future of Canadian hockey is in great hands. I'm Roman, I'm eight years old and I play hockey. The hockey is like the best thing ever to me. It's like half of my heart. Speaking of the future, meet Roman Marcotte. If you haven't heard his name yet, trust me, you will but it may just not be for a very, very long time. Because unlike Shane Wright, Roman Marcotte is only 11 years old, but he has been training like an NHL player since he was not even three. But here's the thing, because Roman is so young, he hasn't played in a major league as of yet. And unfortunately, this has been delayed because of the cancellation of many hockey leagues. But I mean, the talent speaks for itself. Roman, since he was basically a toddler, has displayed talent far, far beyond his actual age. His skating is already better than some professional hockey players. I mean, look at this clip from hockey training. Roman's fundamentals are evidently amazing on top of him having a very consistent and accurate shot. Not to mention that my man even went on Steve Harvey's talk show. <laughs> what? But I do want to pump the brakes. Roman Marcotte is only 11. He wouldn't even be draft eligible until what, like 2029? And don't get me wrong, I hope to continue to watch Roman's development and I do really hope he does succeed and become something. But for the most part, Roman is so young and has the spotlight on him at such a young age. 
and I hope that he just enjoys hockey and has a true love for the game. Because his skill level is amazing, but it is not even fair to have any expectations for someone that young. Still though, super, super exciting. Dare take your eyes off Sidney Crosby when he's on the ice. Because if you do, you might miss something like this. Plays like this are commonplace for a kid who's been making great moves for a while now. Definitely third year novice when I scored 159 goals. Without a doubt, Sidney Crosby is one of the greatest child phenoms, not just in hockey, but in sports history. Like, I kid you not. Also, <laughs> ignore that pun too. You know how some individuals are just naturally gifted at certain things? Well, that is Crosby with hockey. As a five-year-old playing Timbits hockey, it has been stated that every parent in the stands knew he was going to be the next great talent, as he was just naturally miles above his age class, doing things that kids double his age couldn't even do. Imagine seeing a five-year-old and going, yep, he's going to the NHL. That just sounds insane. And throughout his entire minor career, Crosby would dominate his age class so badly, he had to face off against kids at least four years older than himself. And he dominated them too. Crosby wasn't just on another level, he was on another stratosphere. In fact, when Sid was 12, he tried out for a midget league where he would play against, you know, 17 year olds. Except, the league thought the age gap was too inappropriate to have such a young kid on a team. And so his parents would sue the league and well, they lost. The next season now as a 13 year old, Crosby would make the team. And well, as a 13 year old, playing against competition who were up towards 8 years older. Sidney Crosby would put up a ludicrous 193 points. 193 in 74 games as a 13 year old quadruple underager. And he would even get called up to the Junior A team that season. The next season Sid as a 14 year old would try to convince the CHL to allow him to play in the QMJHL. But there was a problem. The exceptional status rule didn't exist yet. And so Crosby would pack his bags and go to Shattuck St. Mary's. And still as the youngest player on the team by two to three years, 162 points in 57 games. And the next season, he was finally able to enter the QMJHL. And what else can I say besides complete and utter domination? 135 points as a rookie. 168 points in 62 games in the QMJHL in his draft season. Generational stat lines not even McDavid touched. And of course, he'd be drafted first overall in 2005, and you know, just had one of the most prolific careers in NHL history. No, no, not a big deal. Okay, if you want to see some of the most ridiculous minor career stats, well, buckle up. When Wayne Gretzky was nine, he was playing in a league for players two to three years older than himself. In his first season, Wayne would put up 167 points in 62 games. Okay, not bad. The next season, Gretzky would up that number to 196 goals, 316 points in 76 games. Wayne Gretzky in his final season would put up, and I'm not even joking, 378 goals, 517 points, in 85 games. Wayno as a child phenom averaged six points per game. The most ludicrous stat line I have ever seen. And as for his NHL career, here are the greatest scorers currently playing in the NHL. McDavid, Crosby, Patrick Kane, and here is Gretzky. Yep, but if we want to find the most dominant CHL career, well, that title goes to Super Mario. Growing up, Mario Lemieux learned how to play hockey with bottle caps and small wooden sticks. And after having a clear talent for the game, Mario would begin his minor career. Funny enough, a raid alongside of Mark Bergerman. 150 goals, 243 points in 65 games. Not too bad, but not until he would enter the QMJHL would Lemieux prove his dominance. In fact, before playing a single game, Lemieux would declare he would break every record. Kinda cocky, but in his first season, he would put up 96 points. 84 goals, 184 points the next season. And in his final year, aka his draft year, 
Super Mario would put up a monster 282 points, 133 goals, and one of the best junior leagues in the world. And easily the most dominant junior season in Canadian history. Which, I mean, says a lot. Mario would be drafted first overall, and went on to being arguably the greatest player in NHL history. Because what was more so impressive about Lemieux was the fact that he was 6'4", 230 pounds. A monster compared to Gretzky. He was so dominant in the NHL, it wasn't even fair. And fun fact, at the age of 40, Lemieux would play alongside of who else but Sid the Kid, a storyline made up in fairy tales. And speaking of record setters, after putting up 97 goals and Pee Wee, Ty Ratty was setting up to be the next great Western Canadian hockey player, who just so happens to be from my hometown in Alberta. In 2008, Ty Ratty would break a Western Canadian record, as he would put up an unbelievable 75 goals, 131 points in 33 games. Which honestly sounds terrible considering we just talked about Lemieux and Kretzky. But this would earn him the second selection in the WHL Bantam Draft, right behind the Nuge. And as a 14 year old, playing against competition up towards 4 years older, Ty Ratty would put up 29 goals and 54 points, catapulting him into the WHL. 37 points in 61 games in his rookie season, not bad, not great. The next season Ty would improve his game with 79 points, but this is where his biggest weakness would be exposed. Yes, Ratty is an elite scorer, but his skating was starting to lag behind the top end talent and his 79 points would earn him pick number 32 in the 2011 NHL Draft. In the next two seasons, Ratty would excel to an all new level. 57 goals, 121 points the very next season. 110 after that, and after failing to make the St. Louis Blues roster, Ratty would also tear up the AHL with 31 goals as a rookie. However, like I mentioned before, even though Ratty was a child phenom, his skating really took away from his game as he would heavily struggle to adjust to the NHL level, and is currently playing in Finland. So I mean, if anything, Raddy's story goes to show just because you set records and were that child phenom, doesn't mean that there is just a straight upwards trajectory to the NHL. Anyways guys, who is the most dominant child phenom from where you live? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. Thank you so much for watching, see you guys next time.